Did you do any explicit field research for this? Um, apart from having been a, a Sun reader for 30 years, reading several volumes of Jordan's autobiography, um, just for, for incidental details. What did you make of that? I was rather impressed by it. Um, you know, Danube in this book, she never, she never appears, but um, because the, she, the girl we do look at is, is a Danube wannabe. But I was impressed by Jordan in the end. She's uh, Celebrity Mum of the Year, and for good reason. You know, her, her oldest boy, Dwight York's Harvey. son, Harvey, has had serious problems and, and um, accidentally hurts himself, you know, in, in ways that are painful to read about. And she's very good and tough about that. And Do her books have literary merit? Um, that would be pushing it. Um, but they have, they have the merits of, of candor and, and a certain sort of honesty. If you notice, uh, the, the, the one absentee, social absentee from my novels, all of them, is, is the middle class. Uh, I've never written about them. I always write about uh, the criminal class or low-life class and perhaps the very privileged. In an, the novel Yellow Dog, it was the King of England versus a tabloid journalist. Um, that was the contrast. I, I'm o only interested in extremes. And I, I, and I know that world. I, all my life I've had uh, connections with that world. And when I was a kid, I was farmed out to a working class family in, in Wales for months on end and, uh, and loved it. So that's a long way from pit bulls called, was it Joe and? Jack, well, there's six pit bulls in all in the whole thing. Um, of course it is, but, um, but I've never not had that part of my life, and uh, even, even among people who should know better, I mean, my oldest friend, who died at the age of 50 some time ago, was in and out of prison, as, and there's not a single prison in London that I haven't visited him in. Um, and I have friends who, who, uh, who, I have a particular friend, whom I won't name, but he, he fixes me up with situations where he said, some people are coming to this restaurant, you, you might be interested to come along. And they are, you know, villains. Um, so I've... Did you take your notebook? No, no, no. That would be, that would be bang out of order. Um, so you have friends in low places? Yeah, and, um, and I've read about it, a lot about it too. Uh, but I, it doesn't feel like it, it feels, for, for me to write about them is not crossing a chasm, it's a, a, a rut that any frog could straddle. It's um, one of the voices in my head is, is that kind of voice. Do you think that a Mormon president is anything to be worried about? Well, it, Mormonism is, uh, is the most uh, contemptible, uh, fraudulent, and above all, recent religion in America. It's only uh, barely 100 years old, and it, its origins are all in hucksterism and uh, uh, hogwash. Uh, and I, I thought that he was, he was just sort of inher inherited uh, hereditary Mormon, um, and that it, it was just something he had in his background. But no, uh, people say that uh, a Mormon is, is mitt, you know, he, he is above all a Mormon. And uh, some of the, you should read Christopher Hitchens on this in God is Not Great, but the way they claim conversions from the dead, including the six million of the Holocaust. Uh, you know, how dare you do? Um, you know about temple underpants? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, and but does any of this matter? Is it just it's, it's, is it a personal matter? Do you think it, it matters to anyone else? Uh, I can't see him legislating from a Mormon point of view, but it, it's, it matters to one's opinion of his IQ. You just mentioned uh, Christopher Hitchens. Uh, has there been anything about the process of grieving that surprised you? Yeah, a, a, a great deal. Um, 
w with when it's someone you know a little, one can go through the conventional motions of uh, like Marie Colvin, whom I knew a little bit, you know, where you feel rotten for a few days and you go to the funeral and, and actually do get something out of that and then shed some tears and, and that, then it sort of moves past you because I didn't know her very well. I liked her and admired her. Um, but when it's a, your best friend of 40 years, I, I, I don't expect to, to get to the other side, anything like the other side of it in my lifetime. Uh, Uh, but what I, there have been surprises too. Um, James Fenton at the memorial service read out his poem for Andrew Wood, and it's, he says in that, you know, what would, what would our dead friends want of us? Would they want us to, to grieve for them, and what concentrate on what we have lost in their in their going? And he, he says, what about what they have lost? That's what we should be thinking about. So, and uh, the horrible realization that um, that when you die, it's it's as if uh, everyone else has died. In other words, that that your family, your wife, your children, all the people you love and care about, and everything you love and care about, it's as if they they were on a charter flight and have gone down in flames, and. Uh, it's a it's a multiple bereavement to die, and that's what he's lost. Um, on the other side, and, and surprisingly, um, he he was someone with exceptional love of life, and I always envied it and and acknowledged that it was greater than mine. But since he's died, I found my love of life as he's bequeathed his love of life to me, in that. I feel the obligation to to value every moment uh, because he's not there to value that, that moment. There's a lovely phrase you had in um, in the Pregnant Widow about the house becoming increasingly dilapidated, but the garden getting bigger and the garden of memories. Yes, and it just made me think of that. Yeah, um, <coughs> the, it, the past with a capital P doesn't really enter your life until your 50s. And then suddenly it's this great undiscovered continent where you can go and uh, wander. Um, and that, that, that increases as you get older. As the future shrinks, the past expands, not just in temporal terms, but in sort of geographical terms in your own head. And um, you begin to to, for instance, you you know you meet some old friends and you have dinner, and it's, it's extremely enjoyable. When I was younger, I would say it was good fun last night, but now I I really do think about what it was like and remember moments, and and you're just you know you in a way you're you're becoming. I hope this is <laughs> this is second childhood in its benign form, but your wonder at life increases towards the end because it's tinged with this leave-taking feeling that it's not going to be there for very much longer and uh, it makes you prize it more.